hell oh and welcome back to my channel this is famous james i am your host james and well the last video we did um my girlfriend did for wine tasting for beginners we used um white wine and this time we got a red wine so i thought why not some people like red some people like white wine so i thought she would so she just suggested should i do a red one um, so that's what she's going to do because she did talk a little bit about redding the tannings in red wine in the last video so I thought I'd give you something extra and uh, you know why not but if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe click the notification bell comment and all, more importantly like and also check out my other videos as well because there's lots to come there's going to be skiing videos soon uh, motorbike videos car videos all that type of stuff but without further ado here is again my girlfriend with her wine knowledge. Hello, I'm Charlotte, James's girlfriend, and I'll show you how to taste red wine today. Now, what is the point of tasting wine professionally? Well, as I said last time, taste is subjective, so whether you like the wine or not is uh, subjective. Um, but it is useful to uh, actually learn more about wine and also what sort of wine it might be and if you get very good at it um, you can obviously guess what wines might be uh, obviously I know what wine I'm being poured here um, and actually it's quite unusual it's it's one of our favorite everyday drinking reds um, barefoot merlot but I've just noticed it doesn't actually have a vintage date on it <laughs> um, the vintage date, you know, the, the year you see on a bottle is the year that the grapes were grown and harvested. But um, I can only presume that Barefoot, which are based in California and are the biggest winery in the world, have like put so many years worth of wine into this one bottle that there's no like overall year they could put on it. And that actually has probably made it, you know, a really well-balanced wine because it is a very well-balanced wine, you know, for the price, which is usually about six pound, uh, which is our usual price point, as you probably guessed. Um, so, without further ado, we uh, we look at the red wine. Um, we will see it's clear. Uh, all wines should be clear, or else there's a problem. Um, but yeah, it is actually quite deep this one, so um, it's like a clear, deep ruby colour, so that's pretty, pretty normal. Um, how alcoholic the wine is will be evident from how, how big the legs are, or tears, which are the bits of wine that uh, cling to the glass and then dribble down. If they uh, stay there quite a while and dribble quite slowly, then obviously the the wine is more dense and obviously um it's uh it's going to be more alcoholic or more sweet but that would not be normal for a red wine red wines are usually dry so it it, it suggests it's probably more alcoholic but i've just looked at the bottle again and it is 13 and a half percent which is a, a very usual uh percentage point for red wine but then again new world wines and this is a new world wine it's from california um they often lie about the percentage point to be honest i wouldn't be surprised if it's more like 14 and a half any case so we've looked at it we've discovered it's probably quite alcoholic probably 14 and a half despite saying it's 13 and a half um it's very deep in color um and ruby colored if the wine's more brown it's probably older and this isn't, I wouldn't imagine this is very old at all, but as I've said, very unusually, they, they don't actually have the date on the bottle. And then we go on to the smelling of it, and uh, you can get such lovely smells out of red wine. Obviously, swirl it around again. Mmm, you'll always have like a red fruit or a black fruit flavour, really, with a red wine. Um, and you can judge him from past experience and what fruits you happen to have eaten yourself and I do recommend you try as many red and, and black fruits as possible uh, you will then be able to think in your mind what does this actually smell like so you know definitely blackberry and, um, and plum are evident here um, two distinct smells but there is also sort of 
jammy fruit smell. It's not like a fresh fruit, it's um, kind of more sweet and jammy, um, which some people look down on. But I don't think there's anything up with a bit of jamminess. Also, incidentally, if you put wine on the radiator, you will make it um, nice and, you know, warm. And I personally see nothing, nothing up with that either, uh, provided you don't heat it up too much. We actually sit the red wine quite near the radiator uh, because the colder the red wine, the more harsh the tannins will be. And, you know, it'll be a bit more difficult to drink, especially without food. Um, but yeah, generally this is a very approachable, very jammy, uh, almost ribena -y wine really. But you can actually smell the um, the oak, but judging from the price point of the wine and the fact it's from uh, America, I wouldn't expect it to have been in barrels. Uh, I suspect they've probably thrown some oak chips in um, in a stainless steel vat where it's been kept for a few years, just to add that that oaky flavour without actually having to um, store it in a barrel. Uh, they say that American oak has a more sort of sweet vanilla -y smell as well as the woody smell and French oak has a more sort of polishy, polish smell. So this is definitely American oak getting lots of sweet vanilla there. So yeah it's lovely it's got you know your plum, your blackberry, maybe black currant Actually, yeah, now I think about it, very blackcurrant. As I said, it's almost a bit like Ribena in a way. Uh, the Ribena of the wine world. Uh, so those are the smells. And also, um, I forgot to mention for the white wine, but any wine, when you smell it also, you're thinking about how intense it is. And if it's a very strong, intense smell, then it's probably a more expensive wine. Or, or it just happens to, um, you know be a quite good wine despite being quite cheap like this one because it's you know it's got lots of you know really nice aromas that are quite strong and also you have to think about does it smell youthful or does it smell developing or is it fully developed now if you can smell like sort of farmyardy gamey smells that are slightly unpleasant to some people that would probably indicate the wine is quite old it would probably go with it being brown rather than ruby red like this one and uh, it probably indicated it's been aged for quite a while uh, but obviously this is screw cap and you know it's meant to be drunk ASAP really uh, I'll get onto that some other time about aging wine um, but no farmyardy smells on this which they would be a cause for concern if it had any um, it's just straight up fruit smell so I'd say it's youthful or perhaps developing because if you can smell oak it has developed for a while, but it may not have had the oak chips in it for that long. And then, yay, finally we get to taste the wine. Really slurp the wine to get the air into it, get the flavours out. Really run it all around your mouth so all of your taste buds can taste it. So the first thing we think about is the sweetness of the wine and like most red wines it's dry, um, you can tell sweetness from the tip of your tongue, that's most uh, susceptible to sweetness. Um, and then we think about how acidic it is, uh, now if I had a spittoon, um, which I don't, um, or you can go and spit the wine out over the sink, if you spit the wine out and then if you lean your head forwards afterwards if you get lots of saliva coming to the front of your mouth then that probably um, indicates it's quite an acidic wine. Uh, red wines usually not quite as acidic as white wines and I don't think this one's very acidic because you're not getting lots of saliva in the mouth. No it's got very, it's very well balanced you know the um, the body, the, the tannin, the alcohol, the acidity, all very nicely balanced. So they have made a very good little wine here, barefoot. Uh, so yeah, we've already talked about the um, the dryness and the acidity. And now on to the tannin. And the tannin isn't too over the top in this. It's not too bitter at all. Uh, tannin is the taste like, you know, tea. Uh, if you ever drank tea without milk, it, it's quite bitter. That's exactly the same sort of taste. It's... Um, 
So some people like that and some people are a bit more susceptible to it and, and not so keen on it but tannin actually goes really well with like cheese and so your red wine goes with cheese um, ideally but this wine has quite soft tannins um, which probably means that the grape skins didn't have too much contact with the wine for too long a period because the tannin is from the grape skins and they've probably done that deliberately so one can just you know glug this on the sofa while watching tv one night you know rather than enjoy it with cheese you know as a fine wine or whatever um you know if you're going to age your wine for a long time it does need tannins um, as well as lots of uh, acidity and alcohol and so those wines that are best to be aged and they can't be drunk immediately because they don't taste too good whereas this one has clearly been designed to be drunk asap not that it would harm it being kept for a few years but it probably wouldn't be quite as good but lose a bit of the fruit uh, so the tannins are very approachable on this not too extreme and then we think about the alcohol we've already looked thought about the alcohol by swirling it and um, as I said it might be a bit of a uh, disguised alcohol in it it says it's 13 and a half it may be a tad more to be honest um, but yeah it's very approachable and fruity and everything's really evenly balanced with this uh, this wine um, and then we think about the um, the flavour of it again and and as for all good wines you, you can taste on in the mouth what you smelled you know the nice fruity flavours a little bit of toasty oak and then as I said before um, the better the wine the longer the fruity flavours remain in, in your mouth and this is you know quite average really so you can tell this isn't any you know amazing quality wine it, it just uh, the fruit flavours generally you know fall off a cliff quite soon after you've drunk it but you know never mind you can just go back for more cheers thank you so what did you think about that do you like that? So I hope you like the other, my uh, this video, and I hope you like the white wine video. Um, you know there are going to be other videos coming. If you keep if you keep pressing that like and comment and tell us what you like, what you want to hear about. If you disagree with it, tell, express, express why you disagree with it. What your thoughts on it? What you got out of the video? What you got out of the wine? Um, if there's a wine you think we should taste, or I should say, if you think Charlotte should taste a different kind of wine that's similar, or you'd like to her opinion on it. End of the day, this is about the community and and the, um, the wine lovers, basically. So anyway, as I said before, hope you like this video. Give it a like. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Click notification bell, and more importantly, enjoy the videos. And we'll all see you very very soon. Bye bye.